All right. So I I really presume that you have read reading the image and the guidelines for a painting analysis. Okay. So before you do this task, make sure you have done the following. Okay. Read and understood reading the image by Alice Guillermo. That's pages 15 to 29 of the textbook. And you have read the painting analysis guidelines and samples, pages 29 to 34. And view the supplementary videos that contain my, uh, an, uh, my discussion, okay, or elaboration on these topics. Okay, so just a sort of recap now. So we'll have this painting. This, of course, this is not part of your prelim exam, no? This is not one of the images that I'm going to assign you. So let's say that you saw this painting okay and without doing research no? okay example you saw this um, in a restaurant no or in a gallery or in a library for example or certain mall no display siya. okay and your knowledge on painting analysis and reading the image how will you analyze this painting okay what's going to be your topic sentence so you have steps in the in the guidelines now so view the painting spend a longer time looking at it look at the details okay and then after that you will jot down words phrases ideas that cross your mind in relation to the artwork and then after that you find a commonality okay commonality mm -hmm. among the terms or words that you listed and after that you form your topic sentence okay mm -hmm. so in your in your paper no in your analysis that you're going to submit to me the first sentence will be your topic sentence so we'll just be uniform on that okay so that our topic sentence will guide us for the rest of the sentences in the paragraph because the paragraph that i'm going to require from you is only one paragraph okay one paragraph but it already incorporates all the four planes of analysis coming from alice guillermo so you have the basic semiotic plane um that tells us about the color the lines no iconic plane you look at the image itself the icons so if you have the woman here okay is she looking at us and then what is the position of the image what is she doing okay and um get get the feeling no what, what can be the message of the artist no? out from these two no basic semiotic and iconic and then when you have contextual you then relate okay the main topic to issues in uh, uh not, not not yet no not yet issues on society because that is under evaluative plane when you say contextual plane like um what other works no um, like literature or it can be other paintings okay that relate to this artwork okay or what can be an event in history that can be related to this artwork and then the last evaluative plane what is the social issue that is contained in the artwork so your analysis will be an interplay of all these four okay so i'm expecting all these four aspects to be included in your paragraph okay and of course Diva, we have to look at the title or reclining nude and then the year it was made so 1928 so um your knowledge on world history is um what do you call this one it's an advantage like you know what happened to women in 1928 diba? so siguro na stuck knowledge about it okay but of course you can still do your research on that so if you're going to make a topic sentence for this huh, because you will make a paragraph analysis what is going to be your topic sentence okay volunteer volunteer to share Just feel free to um, raise your hand or say say anything. Oh, 
Oh, volunteer, you are still formulating. Why are you very silent? <laughs> A volunteer. Oh, nobody is going to formulate a topic sentence for this. Once again, without formulating the topic sentence. What's your idea, Be? What can be the message of the artist? Ah, uh, yeah, Muhammad. Yes, Muhammad. Uh, I'll try, ma'am. I'll try. Um, my topic sentence is The Reclining Nude by Suzanne Valadon is puzzling. Uh, okay. So, The Reclining Nude by Suzanne Valadon is puzzling. Okay. Sige. Can you prove that? Why is it puzzling? Sorry, nawala. Why is it puzzling? Um, I can't see po, ma'am. Sige, lagi po na um, po. Anong nawala? Oh, there. Can I'm not really now? sure po with the history on 1928, but as it seems, the woman is currently nude and she is trying to cover up her body, ano nga private parts. But then, when you look at her face, she shows no hint of being ashamed she's just accustomed to the feeling of being nude yet with that she's still trying to cover her private parts um i believe as i see it po i i my brain makes a connection on being a prostitute or being a used woman because as it seems the the title reclining nude maybe her value as her body's value is declining yet with her covering up her private parts she still has a little bit of respect for herself even though she's doing her job that's my analysis as well. okay. uh, that's how i see the painting uh -huh. okay. thank you muhammad no so it's good no that muhammad uh mentioned the title so it's really a must no a reclining nude by suzanne valadon so i i told you that you should begin in that manner because we ha we have to know you know as a reader i have to know what particular artwork you are analyzing because there can be other reclining nude paintings done by other artists no so having the same title so you have to be specific reclining nude by suzanne baladon and then you have uh, is puzzling or seems puzzling so it depends on you on what's going to be your verb and then you have your controlling idea which is your opinion about the painting okay so according to muhammad he is a little bit puzzled um what, what can be the is this her job like what, why is she there no? uh, she, she she can also be like a, a model no? uh, who is being painted or is she a prostitute so we have many questions in our mind okay okay thank you Muhammad for sharing that okay what about the others what do you notice of yeah iconic play no what, what do you notice no uh, is she confident to show her body? Um, yes, uh, Christian? Uh, no, ma'am. Because uh, based, based also to how Muhammad described, uh, you can see directly from the body language that she is not confident or she may be forced to strip off and and just from when just from the murag when just from the how her legs cross uh can be a symbol of her conflict within her idea of showing the nude that's all yes. um, for yes. how the body language oh yeah thank you christian no? so uh it seems that yeah we'll i'll call you rick now in a while huh so yeah according to christian um, the, the woman here uh, seems to be hesitant, no? Hesitant to show off her body. Uh, why is that, no? Take a look at the lines. So we'll now look at the lines of basic semiotic plane. So um, her arms are not open, diba? Wala mo siya nag no? But it's covering uh, her 
breast. Okay, although some portions of the breast could be seen, but uh, it shows some something like a hesitation. No? And then you have the crossed legs. Diba? So covering the vagina part. Okay, so it's not open legs or um, open arms. Okay, so uh, with those actions, they can tell us that she is hesitant to pose. Okay, but in the first place, we ask, why is she posing? Is it her job? Okay, so that's another question in our mind. Okay, Sige, I will call now Rick. Um, Gwegwe. Sige, Rick. Um, other than also, also Mam Mabi. Uh, her being a prostitute we could also say that she is an abused woman mom because of the cloth which is white and white in most cultures means surrender mm -hmm. so she's so she's an abused woman mom mm -hmm. okay so there can be an indication that she is an abused woman okay yeah that can be huh? okay so or um it, it is she there for why is she there in the first place? Kung prostitute siya, okay, what can be the situation? After she was used, after she was abused, oh, sige, you have an idea, uh, Mr. Escamilla, Leo. Sige, Leo. Um, my theory would be she was forced to do so for money and sa sa ako ang makita ko even though murag even though murag nakaulaw siya or even though she is hesitant to show her body she still showed it man so it's like she is forced but she has no other choice than to do it yes no so yeah that, that can be one possibility because of course not the painting um cannot speak no the artist cannot speak so um, we as a viewer will only speculate what's going on okay and then we try to get the message of the artist okay so 1928 um perhaps at that time there were less opportunities for women no you have the great depression especially that it's in america okay to give mr gregory you want to add something also in 1928 man put mom is that the, the there was a rise in domestic violence for women mom that's why in 1928 um the uh, franchise for equality it was ratified during that year mm, okay no so you have done your research oh, oh. So you can, Anna, no the the rise of domestic violence no? that women were hit by their husbands and then wala na, siguro wala na protect sa ilaha no so human rights wala pa okay yeah and going back to the answer of mr escamilla earlier no nga, yeah uh, she can be forced into the situation nobody probably forced her but it's herself no because of the oppressive system nga, um there were less opportunities for women no work available no oh, yeah you also have submissiveness of women by miss kagulada no can you elaborate on that uh, miss kagulada on submissiveness of women I mom, uh, I'll just share mom based on what I observed mom kanang kay diba the girl I, the woman was trying to kanang cover cover up herself and kanang you can see in her face mom nga I wouldn't say nga mura siya og kanang accustomed na ano mom kay mura siya og I think mura siya anxious or nervous mom nga kahitabo sa iya and that's why I said nga submissive mom kay back then we all know mam pud nga ang men gid ang kana superior gid and as kanang giingon a while ago last lang gid kayo ang opportunity sa women so kana walay choice ang women kon dili mo conform sa unsa ang gusto nga ginaingon ay ginapabuhat sa mga lalaki mam and it's tinuod gid siya mam nga mura pud siya og kanang naka experience of violence mam nga no? okay no yes yeah, submissiveness of women and yeah, they are forced into that particular job. No? Okay, wala siguro other jobs available. Oh, sige, Mr. Bustamante, Fritz? Yes, I also want to comment about uh, the overall theme of the of the painting, which is about uh, a dire state of the of women, especially was what happened in 1928. I want to comment, I want to relate that to the basic se semiotic plane, 
in the painting, which uh, which is the bleakness of the overall painting. You can see that it's not exactly lively, so you can probably have or presume the fact that um, <clears throat> it reflects that sense of hopelessness for women especially, and you can actually see that in the women's face. I think um, for Cherry's opinion about um, she's anxious, for me, I think when I look at her face, she seems like she she is hopeless, like there's lifelessness in her eyes. And so that kind of reflects the overall theme of oppression in women as well. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you, Fritz, for that, no? Okay. Another one raised her hand with um, like to add. Ga Galunida. Hello. Sorry. Golosinda. Grizel, did you raise your hand? Grizel? Hello, ma'am. Nag raise ka ka, Grizel? Yes, yes, po. Oh, sige. I would like to add about... Uh, louder? Uh, Pwede na, louder gamay, Grizel? Wait lang, ma'am. Kusok, ma'am. Sige daw. I would like to add about katong domestic violence mo because sayang face kay murag obvious nga na dark circles and murag pinkish sayang cheek so i i think that would symbolize kanang abuse ma'am and feel pod nako yung ang garet yung seems like blood okay so katala ko maad ma'am oo uh, sige sige thank you no so you, you see abuse in her face nang wala siya na Lagung lagung man siguro ni, I, we don't know, no, we don't know. Okay, uh, another important thing to notice, no, St still under basic semiotic plane, di ba, mga lines, mga curves, no? So, look at her tummy. Oh, yung bilbil ba? Na si bilbil, right? Uh, look at her tummy, it's not flat. No? There are bulges, okay? And you try to connect that to the the artist is a woman. The artist is a woman. Okay? So there can also be a message here uh, coming from Suzanne Valadon that uh, women do not necessarily have the ideal figure as what men impose or say media nowadays impose. No nga, kuan dapat sila 24 ang hawak. No? But this tells us a reality. No, that women can have bulges in their tummy. Diba? Okay, what is shown in media, uh, sexy, 24 of hawak, but it's really a reality, no? especially when women undergo childbirth. Okay? The figure may not be the same anymore. No? So uh, remember that men, no? like your girlfriend now, super sexy, and then you marry your girlfriend, maminyo mo, agoy, mga anak, o ma utro na siya. And especially, uh, as a woman will age, no? the metabolism of the body changes. No? Yeah, good for some women. They can go to the gym, exercise. But what about other women who are busy? No? Nga halos, hurot ang time sa kusina, manglaba, magtrabaho pag sa office or work from home, no? So difficult for women. So it's a reality also no, that is presented by Suzanne Valadon that not all women have the perfect figure, okay, as what society expects. Okay? So kana siya no, so if we have those ideas, um we now narrow it down dayon to our topic sentence and then whatever is your topic sentence, make sure you can defend. Okay? Because the painting is open to several interpretations. Correct? No, open siya. It has varying interpretations, but not all interpretations can be accepted. Okay? You can, your interpretation can only be accepted if you prove it. Okay? And then, how will you prove? Okay, go back to the painting, the lines there, the color that you see, and then iconic, the, the positioning of the image, and then the way the image looks at us. So, muna dahil na, valid na imong interpretation because you prove it. No? And then, ang imong proof, na adiha. Okay? But if your proof is, wala gid dito, wala diri na, wala, wala yung organization ng imong papel, uh, then na dahil questionable na dayon. Diba? Or, uh, the, set, the supporting details do not really support your topic sentence. No? 
like you have you've gone through this in in high school or in your you junior uh, in your senior high no a uh, grade 12 or grade 11 writing topic sentences diba uh, for example uh, you write about movies no philippine movies so your topic sentence is filipino movies are predictable okay no problem because pred uh, predictable there is your um, controlling idea however as you write your supporting details you then wrote there um, Daniel Padilla and Kathleen Bernardo love them is popular. Okay, how is that related to your topic sentence on Filipino movies being predictable, di ba? So, there can be some details which are irrelevant. Okay, so remove them because they do not relate to your topic sentence. Okay, so I'm expecting that your paragraph is well organized and then you have coherence, no? You will not write in sentences which do not relate, no? How about ito? Mga choppy, choppy nga sentences. Okay? So try to avoid them, ha? And then, of course, your grammar, your spelling. Okay. And then end with a conclusion. Do not end abruptly. So your conclusion can be a restatement of your topic sentence. Okay? And you don't introduce a new idea in your conclusion. You have learned that before, okay? So, yeah, you relate this to history, you know, under contextual plane, and then in the evaluative plane, you then try to look at the role of women in society, okay? So, what social issue is found there? So, yeah, we have mentioned it that, yeah, she can be a prostitute or she is forced into prostitution because there is no other means for her or her family to survive. And, you know, that's even true up to now. Huh? So there are many, many women who are jobless and then the only option is prostitution. However, I've also read no, somewhere before, no, uh, there are some girls or ladies who go into prostitution not because they live in poverty, but because they want instant money. Uh, nabasa na ko na, it's, it's in a journal, published siya, no? It's a research. And then, what is ito nga? One lagi, uh, women want, or girls, no? Especially school girls daw ko no nga. They want new gadgets, no? And then, just like instant money. So, yeah, they, they go into prostitution. So, it doesn't really follow nga all ladies who are into prostitution are poor. Na uban diha, na ikaya, pero gusto lag like instant money. Okay? Yeah, you can relate uh, that to the issue here on prostitution or cannot, like, you know, um, having no jobs for women. Okay, now in your prelim, no, there are groups that will be assigned on paintings, but there will also be groups that will be given ads. Okay? Advertisement. Okay. So we'll have a sample analysis of an advertisement. So it's still the same, no? You read the image. Okay? And since it is an advertisement, always bear in mind that it is to sell the product. It is enticing the audience, the readers, the viewers to buy the product. Kanagin una ang nasa inyong mind, ha? So, you ask yourself, what is the purpose for this ad? Okay? And is it really true? So, when you go to the evaluative plane na, is it really true or does it follow? Okay? So let's take a look at one ad. It's an ad of a perfume. Okay. Okay. Avian's night mask. Okay. So this is the ad. Right. So if you are given this as, as an assignment, no? Uh, what will you write about? What's going to be your topic sentence and Dion? Avian's night mask. Like, what is the message of the um, ad or the agency here or the company? So, still the same, you will write the title. I mean, as your topic sentence, you indicate the name of the product. Okay? 
Avian's Night Mask presents or illustrate or promotes ano sila ng mga verbs, no? What is the ad promoting here? Always bear in mind, no? If you use this product, what are you capable of doing based on the image? O oh, sige, uh, Miss Golosinda. Oh, pwede makasun sa na image na nasa ubos. Pwede ba siya maklaro? Pwede maklaro? So, I will enlarge, ha? Klaro na? Put it on and have an Avian's Night. Introducing Avian's Night Mask. Put it on and have an have an have an Avian's Night. Mo na siya nakasulat. Okay na na basa na. Okay, Miss Oiha. Uh, based on the picture, ma'am. Uh, based on my observation, to uh, it indicates that. If the man that will put on the perfume, not you know, um, he will seduce the women. I actually, it's a, it's a perfume for the woman. Um, oh, when you research on this, it's for it's the woman wearing it. It's this. Uh, for me, it's the same <laughs> introduction. That they will seduce the, the men. Mm -hmm. They will use the perfume. Okay, so yeah, that can be the message, no? If you wear this perfume, you can seduce the man. Okay. And then you now look at um, the composition of the picture. Uh, it's like a painting, man, gihapo, no? an image that is being analyzed. So how are the two characters presented? So you now mentioned that under basic semiotic plane. So when you analyze, do not mention anymore for the basic semiotic plane. Wala na. Ha? Or for the iconic plane, you, you remove those words. Okay. To proceed immediately to your sentence, like how are the two images presented? Yes, um, Christian Manabat. So um, in in here we have the in frame of the man uh, mm -hmm. inside a triangle. Mm -hmm. So we can say that uh, the perfume uh, captures the man uh, inside and. Other than captures it, other forms of triangle, uh, we can represent it to the female reproductive system. So, so which connects to the theme of the ad, uh, which exudes uh, or releases a an erotic or sexual emotion. Um, okay, yeah, and also the triangle shape there. That's very a very good point there, Christian. The man is framed. So in photography, you have that, no framing. Or in movies, you call it interior framing. So it's about frame, okay? So what is used to frame the man? It's the legs of the woman. So murabag na trap na ang lalaki, no? Okay? So that's a very clever way of presenting it. And as a viewer, we tend to anticipate what's going to happen next because the man is trapped, no? Kasi mahitabu sunod, o di ba? Our imagination already, no? Is running, okay? Sige. Another thing to notice is also the red color. Diba? So where do you see the red? It's in a grace of hand. Um, yeah, Lagnada, Bernie. Um, hello, ma'am. Uh, yes. Uh, I will just uh, add a, another point uh, yeah. of Tracy's yeah. um, interpretation of the advertisement. Uh, the color orange, the yellow or reddish part is in indicating that it is hot or hotness which uh, for women hot is uh, can be uh, can seduce a, a man or mm -hmm. its opposite sex or any um, human that she or he will um, or not, uh, attracted to yes no so Actually, I think it's red. No, in the original, it's red. No, and what what is the symbol for red? Although it varies from culture to culture, and it depends on the context. But in this particular context, we are aware of the symbol for red. Diba? What does red symbolize? The the red shoes of the woman. So why not white? Diba nga nung red gidang color gigamit? No. Okay, uh, Miss Manluso, what, what does red signify? 
I just want to add, ma'am. Um, for me, red is like sexy, mm -hmm. um, power, seductive, mm -hmm. you And then, if from the ad itself, introducing mm -hmm. Avian Night must to put it on and have an Avian Night. So, I guess if you kanang magamit ka na nga, nga perfume, it's like you are very seductive. You can make a man nga mag roll over sa imo ha like and all like. Just like in the picture, ang man kay na siya sa under sa kay naka frame siya sa legs sa girl. So it was it's like the guy is under the girl. So pwede mo pa sunod sa guy from you. You can make the man roll over you. Mm, correct, correct, no? So kana no, it stands for passion, no? Seduction. And yeah, it adds to the entire message of the artwork, no? That this ad. Okay. Um, yeah, Miss Navarrete, you have something to add? Uh, yes, ma'am. This is um about the light colored lines, ma'am, hmm. which also indicates um sunlight, Yeah. Um, the light colored lines uh, directs the viewer's eyes from the side, ma'am, to the man, then to the legs. Yes. So from the name of the product, Avian's Night Mask, meaning, ma'am. Um, it can I, it can also mean that if the women applies that it will last long because the perfume will last long until sunlight until daylight oh, until sunrise uh -uh. <laughs> sorry until sunset <laughs> no okay. what time of the day is this ka? if you're going to um, analyze maybe that, mga five or six a.m. Ma or when, ma or sa hapon ma'am after work. Yeah, pwede po. Oo, oh, oh, yeah. no? Padulong gabi e. Padulong gabi e. <laughs> so after work, so after work, mahapit sa siya sa babae or what, no? Or he goes home to the girl. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Sige, so, sani siya in photography, no? It's called pattern shadows, no? So you look, it seems that you have the windows here at the side. We don't see the windows, but more so blinds, no? Window blinds or Venetian blinds, no? And then, nada yoy mga lines, lines diha, no? So it's called using pattern shadows in photography. Although we don't have photography in our, um, what do you call this, in our um, English 7, okay, we have limited time, good, no? Uh, we were asked to reduce the, the topics, no? For nine weeks lang ba yata, no? So, maraginag may rodain ato on photography. So, this is on using pattern shadow so the best example of this is light through window blinds the regularity of the shadows helps make it clear that the decision was intentional so coming from the photographer no, intentional gina siya, so that the lines will direct us to the man no? so the lines from the blinds and shadows help direct your eye throughout the photo so from the man then to the legs of the woman Particularly, the ko ano tanawa the the private part area, no tanawa ang direction sa sun, no? the rays of the sun, iba. So ko ang get very clever. Okay, now if you will then use the contextual plane no? or include the contextual plane, iba. We said that knowledge of previous history, previous literary work, or it can be a film in the past, can be an advantage. So. There is this old film in 1967. Okay, it's titled The Graduate. It's really iconic. This is Dustin Hoffman, and then in the film, he is framed no, by the legs of Mrs. Robinson. I have seen that film. Quite funny, sha, no? Light lang siya, but medyo na siya message for the ending. And you have there the song the sound of silence used in this film okay so he is framed by mrs robinson so um the character of dustin hoffman here he just graduated from college and then diba, in the u.s when you're already 18 and above you're expected to leave home no and then live on your own but he came back to his parents house no and then one lang kanang pa chill chill lang swimming in the pool doing nothing and then his parents always told him, no? And then there is this family friend, Mrs. Robinson, who got attracted to Dustin Hoffman. And then he was she, she was trying to seduce him. 
and that's really the iconic image. And you see, um, 1967, and then I think this ad, mga 1990s ni siya, no? So, this one came much earlier. So, we can probably say that um, the Avian's night mask is an allusion, no? Allusion to the graduate. So, the word allusion, that's a literary term, no? Wherein you will use a previous work. Diba? Like you, you you use it or like something like you borrow it no? for your particular context. Okay, so na nakay masulat ba yon sa contextual plane, right? And then under evaluative plane, like you look at society, no? Does it really follow that if you wear the perfume, you are capable of seducing? Yeah, probably, diba? <laughs> Well, it's up to you now how to formulate that, no? So what social issue is contained in the work? So no, after you have agreed no as a group, no, compose your analysis starting with a topic sentence, then supporting details and conclusion. Create a one paragraph analysis only, okay? Maximum of eight sentences, but it covers all the planes of analysis. Please number your sentences like the sample analysis from the textbook. If I numbered before the sentence, you, you can see a number. So that you are really to follow eight sentences only. So it's a controlled composition. Okay, so plagiarized works will receive no credit. Ha? So ayaw kit pangupya. Ano mga istila pa man ta kung mangupya lang mangyapon ta. Diba? Plagiarized works will receive no credit. And you have the rubric. So I'm going to share to you the rubric and always aim for excellence. And then in the e-learn platform, only one member will submit, okay? And submit in Word file, not PDF, huh? delete PDF, because I might be writing comments. And for me, I find it difficult to comment if the file is PDF, okay? So Word file lang, okay? So submit Word file, because I might um, write my comments, okay? And after you are below your paragraph, copy the rubric, okay? Or put the rubric there. And submit one analysis only for each group through the e-learn portal. 